Moving along, we're going to be doing the box turtle extruders. And to start out, you're going to need these two parts here, the motor plate and the extruder housing. And you'll also need about six heat inserts for this first step. And while my soldering iron is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and set the first three that I'm going to do. And just make sure the lip is going into the hole. And you're just going to set these flush. And I've got my soldering iron at about 190C. There's the first one, second one, and we'll do the third one here. And just make sure everything is completely flush with the part. And once you've confirmed, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next two, which are right here and here. Go ahead and insert these. These may, this one may seem a little odd because it's going to go down deeper. And this first one should be flush with the part. And the second one, you're going to want to make it flush within the recess. And those should look about like that. If you happen to go a little too deep like I did on this one, I don't think it's a big deal as long as you still got clearance in this hole. This is going to be your anti-squish screw later. And for this part, we're just going to add one right here. And just make it flush with the top. For this next part, you're going to need your D2HWC201H micro switch. And just make notice that these are labeled. So this is the first one, load one. This is going to be important to keep track of because later at the end, you're going to be adding the stepper motor. You want to make sure both of these match. I've got the bearing here. Before you go too much further, I'd recommend just dry fitting these pieces together to make sure that um, they're going to fit and they should be able to go together nice and tight. I'm going to go ahead and drop the bearing in the slot here. There we go. Had to shake it a little bit, but you can see it's recessed down there. That's where you want it. Now watch carefully how I insert this because there's only one way it can really go. First of all, you want to drop your plug, your wire through here and kind of tuck it under like that. So see where this little recess is, that's where the screw goes. And just kind of work it into place. You may have to use another tool just to kind of make sure it's fitting in there like I just did there. So it should just slide right into place. And then go ahead and pull the wires carefully just so they're going through like that. I don't really want them twisted, but it doesn't matter. For the next step, you are going to need this dual drive gear kit. And in that kit, we're going to use all of these parts for this first step, we're going to need the two bearings out of this bag, this gear here, and then this drive gear, as well, as well as one of the grub screws. We're going to save the other parts for later. I'm going to go ahead and assemble these parts. I'm going to put a bearing on this end. Should go on nice and easy. Next, we're going to place this drive gear like this. Make sure you've got the one with the hole, because we're going to need to put the grub screw in that. And then you put the other bearing on the end. And it should all fit together nice and neat. And for now, just line up the, the flat of the shaft. So if you rotate this, you'll see the flat like that. And then we're just going to put that grub screw in there. On the LDO kit, you will notice that there's some blue Loctite already on the grub screw, which is good so you don't have to add your own. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosely set this in place. And don't worry if the bearing falls off. So I've got that there where it, it's not going to move. So that's this is the completed assembly here. And we're going to be adjusting this later, so don't worry too much about the position of it. Just make sure that you're on the flat. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert this in, and it should go in pretty easily. Make sure you get it aligned. That's the important part. Okay, I've got that pushed in there. And you should be able to see it roughly lined up with the hole right here. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to adjust that here in a minute and you can see you have the ability to adjust it now before we do that adjustment we're going to go ahead and place this piece over everything should fit in nicely and snap together and then grab your m3 by 8 with the socket heads and you're going to need four of these we're going to go ahead and fasten these and I just like to get them started don't fully tighten until we get all three in and I'll go ahead and fully tighten it up and just don't over tighten it. Just make sure you get a little bit of resistance there. 
then you shouldn't have much of a gap around here. Make sure that when you're doing this, this bearing is centered. I noticed mine initially wasn't, so I had to kind of jiggle it a little bit. But make sure this bearing part here is completely centered. So you want this to be, you don't want this to be uh, slanted. And then this should move pretty easily. If it's not moving easily, you might have over tightened this. And let's not forget to put in this screw. This is your anti-squish. And for now, you can just leave this pretty much flush with the top of the assembly here. And we'll be adjusting that towards the end. Now at this point, grab your filament and go ahead and feed it through. And you may or may not see the gear turn, depending on how tight this is. So what we want to do is we want to be able to adjust the scrub screw. So you want to make sure that it's got the ability to slide and align with that filament. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. And you can get that pretty tight. You don't want that moving around, coming loose. For the next step, you're going to need these ECA SO4 Bowden couplers and with the rubber part removed. And these are going to be press fit into these holes here on the end. And you should be able to just kind of hold them on your table like this, maybe at the edge so this piece doesn't interfere, and just gently insert them in. And if you do have trouble, you could use a, a mallet as well. Okay, I've got this one in, and you can see that we want the metal collar here flush with the part, and then we'll just repeat for this side. And same deal for this, you want to make sure that it's flush, and these pieces should still push. And for this next part, you're going to need your guidler part with the support removed. And I will say, of all the parts so far, I've only had a problem with this part. And I was not able to successfully, on multiple machines, I could not print out the built-in support. If you have a problem removing the support, I would recommend uh, just separating all the objects in your slicer, deleting that built-in support, and then running your own supports. And that seems to work fine for me. And now we're going to use the remaining pieces of our drive gear, and we're going to go ahead and use this included grease to lubricate these. In order to lube this up, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of lube to everything, including the insides of these gears. So I'll go ahead and put some right there, a dab there, and then I'll slide it in. You can either do it that way or you can also do it just directly on the bar. And then slide that in like that. And then go ahead and just Put a little bit more on the outside of the needle bearings and then we're simply going to slide this over and that should fit in there just right and now make sure you orient this correctly you're just going to go ahead and set this piece in here like that and it should the the bar should go into both sides i like to center it but then just gently push down and push down on both ends and just make sure you're all the way in there there we are so it should look something like this. It should be able to move freely. And that's moving pretty good. Now we're going to take this idler part. There's only one way you can fit it in here. It goes in like that. And then you're going to take your M330. There's really only one way to put this in. You want it to, it's going to be going into that heat insert. You're going to insert it through and then just tighten it up. You don't want to over tighten that. You should be able to easily lift it and drop it. Just pretty much once it hits the part of there, you're good. Okay. Got the tensioner set here. We're going to need that next. And you're going to need all these parts. There's this little washer, there's a spring, and there's the head here. And that's going to go into this heat insert. I'm just going to drop it in. Once you kind of feel it in there, biting down on the screw, just turn it two and a half turns. So I'm still trying to find the tension there. And we're, we're going to adjust that in a minute. Now we're going to do the anti-squish adjustment. Go ahead and feed your filament through. Okay, if you can't fit your filament through, you know that you're too tight on this, so just loosen it up. So once I get it through here, I'm going to tighten it down just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and adjust 
this anti-squish screw. So it's feeling pretty rough right now. I've got this now where I can see the gear moving. So I've, just, I've tightened this down to the point where I'm watching the gear move, but it's still, it's still a little bit tight. We're gonna go ahead and back this out a little bit so we don't crush our filament. Loosen this up so it's not grinding. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's moving pretty easily. And now find your stepper motor and make sure your number matches the number here. So I'm, I'm on number one. And when you install this, you're just gonna set it right here and make sure that this wire is angled towards your tensioner screw. And go ahead and flip this over. We're going to drop, our, drop an M38 into this hole and just make sure that screw comes through and then align this like we had it earlier. And then just go ahead and get that screw set. It should come together pretty easily. Make sure you're in the, you're making uh, contact with the gear. Now we've just got to set this one. Now there's a little bit of room to move and this is where the backlash is. So basically it's a similar idea to what we just did with the filament. Go ahead and uh, put this in here, insert your filament and it should with no tension. So if it's all the way down here, it should move very freely. But when you start to push it up, you're not going to have anything. So I'm all the way this way. I can't even feel it move. So the goal would be to get it somewhere in the middle of there so you still have good tension and good movement. In order to set that, I'm going to get my washer out. Gives us a little extra clamping leverage. Keep everything in place. And I'm not going to worry quite yet about exactly where this is going. So let's just go ahead and get this lined up first. And don't completely tighten it. So now this is where we want to find where we need it. So again, all the way, all the way forward, I'm going to be able to move that filament. So that's kind of, that's, that's not feeling real, real free. Okay. That's feeling a little better. So the motor is engaging. I can see the gears turning. So I'm going to go ahead. I think that's about where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Let's just test it. Yeah, it feels a little loose still. So I'm going to adjust this just a hair. I'm going to bring it a little toward, more towards the middle and see what happens there. Yeah, that's where I need it. It's nice and smooth. There's nothing slipping. So if you've got that nice smooth feeling, you know that it's going to be able to pull that filament in properly. So I think that's exactly where we want it. Hopefully you can see that and hear that on camera. I'm going to go ahead and pull this filament out. So this step's pretty simple. You're just going to remove your rubber band if you have one. And then you're going to come down like that. Grab a zip tie of your choice. And then make sure you orient this properly. So I'm going to go ahead and poke it through here. And once you get that pulled, you can go ahead and cut the zip tie. Okay, and that's what your completed assembly should look like. Just repeat this three more times and you're done.